Some of y'all confused, and I'm here to educate you. Is that good? No? guys are going to anamorphics now and i see a lot of uh, literally some of you guys are confused on what anamorphics supposed to look like you guys are either complaining that there's too much flares too soft there's chromatic aberration there's too much distortion that is the joys of anamorphics originally when they got into anamorphics it was to widen the view because television was coming out and they, they wanted to get more people back into theaters. Now digital cameras, the sensors are so clean and crisp. Anamorphic is now a trick to get a dirtier image and dirtier meaning more character. It takes you out of the real world and it puts you into the story of the movie. The thing is, there's a lot of budget anamorphics coming out. They're great, great, great options. They, they give a lot of us first-timer anamorphic people an introduction into what anamorphic is. But the main issues with those is one, they're very sharp and clinical. Two, the streaks just, they don't have any character to them. Three, they're usually pin cushion. People that were shooting anamorphic before all these budget options, they're aware of what traditional anamorphic is. Right now I'm shooting on the Atlas Mercury 72 millimeter. The Mercury in the Orion set by Atlas, they totally get what anamorphic is. They have barrel distortion. Their anamorphic streaks is, isn't just one streak that looks like a streak filter. You get multiple streaks going in there and you get these orbs and these soap bubble looking things. There's so much character to it. To me, when I pick up an anamorphic lens, it inspires me to tell stories, to go out and shoot and just get my camera out. If you're someone that wants a clean clinical look, you don't want anamorphic. You don't want to be shooting anamorphic. That's not the look you want to go for. Anamorphic these days, the only point to be shooting it is to get character because you could easily shoot spherical and just put crops on it. I was gonna give away an RS3 Pro. I'm still doing that giveaway. So I, when I hit 50K, I'll do that giveaway. I have a brand new one that I haven't touched at all. I'm giving that away when I hit 50K subs. So subscribe on the I'm also giving away a Fuji Film X Pro One. 50K subs, <laughs> so subscribe. You can win some shit. All right guys, these are the Atlas Mercury set of anamorphic lenses. If you don't know who Atlas is, they have the Orions. It was like the first proper like vintage looking anamorphic lenses for kind of a, a budget price compared to other anamorphics. I personally have used the Orions before, but I've never put hands on them because I've, it's always been with teens that I've used them. I know with the Orions are a little bit softer wide open, more chromatic aberration. It's 2X anamorphic, so you get a lot of character with that. The Mercury's are happy middle ground. They're way smaller. Wait, they're like quarter the size of the Orions in traditional anamorphics. So once Atlas announced the Mercury set of lenses and I saw the sizes, I was like, oh shit. I think these might be the go-to anamorphics. Now that I've got to actually use these and put them in hand, I am truly obsessed with these lenses. You guys know I've done previous reviews on budget anamorphics, be continuing to do budget uh, anamorphic reviews only because you know, a lot of us, this, this is still $8,000 per lens. That's still, you know, a bit up there for a lot of people that are just getting into it or just, you know, starting to find out the anamorphics. So budget options are still great. So this is the biggest one of all of them currently. This is the 72 millimeter, the 36 millimeter. This thing's very small and they're very robust. You guys saw that we had them on that cowboy shoe and there's dust everywhere. We have bags on it. We're having transmission issues. And so we had to rip the bags off. There's no dust in here from this lens. Uh, some of my other previous uh, uh, cinema lenses just even my canon rf lenses were caked in dust after one shoot like that so they're they're built very well currently you could uh, uh pre-order these and they should be shipping out in the fall so i'm still paying off taxes so i'm probably gonna take a, a little baby loan out to get a set of these i i probably won't get the 36 i'll probably get the 42 that's what we're filming on right now and we'll probably get the 72 but again let me go over anamorphic character uh ristics. Go ahead and pause that real quick. <laughs> I know. Let me just kind of prove a point to you guys real quick. There's a lot of you guys that are complaining about lenses being soft or having chromatic aberration. 
yada, yada, too many streaks, yada, yada, yada. You guys are the same people that are buying super clinical lenses just to cake on three diffusion filters and then blast it with halation and post and film grain. What are you doing? Obviously, you know you want character. So why do you keep buying this marketing that you want sharp, clean, clinical lenses? So all the manufacturers, please start giving us more character. We're over clinical. We have enough sharp, clinical, clean glass. Now we need character. These are gonna be the perfect middle ground. There's a lot of commercial jobs where I can't shoot 2X anamorphic because we have to use social use. And by the time you do that nine by 16 crop out, there's too much character. It's too soft for that. With these, I'll be able to easily still crop into them because these are still sharp, but these aren't gross clinical sharp. These aren't over baked with sharpness. Flares, let me adjust the flares. I'm gonna start popping up stills from movies. Some of our favorite movies that have really strong, vivid blue flares. Everyone complaining, oh, blue flares are ugly. All the favorite anamorphics from the past that we all obsess over have blue, strong, vivid flares. I don't know where, where this hype's coming out from that it's like blue flares are bad, but when you get proper flares from anamorphic design and they have those strong blue flares, I love it because it reminds me of those vintage uh, Panavision anamorphic lenses, the C-series, I think they are. These ones are actually, they have like a neutral flare, but like an amber flare at the same time. I don't know what it is. It looks great though. I would love if they did a blue version, but uh, I'm actually content with the amber. I am beyond excited for these lenses. Again, everything from the form factor, they're still clean for how much character they have. Uh, the biggest thing too, I forgot to mention, is their 1.5X stretch. A lot of us are stuck with 16 by nine sensors on these digital cameras. When you do 2X anamorphic, you're losing a lot of resolution, but also it's hard to monitor 2X on a 16 by nine sensor. So 1.5X is like just the perfect middle ground. And somehow Atlas is still getting a lot of stretch bokeh out of this comparison to other anamorphics with uh, similar stretch factors. So the last thing I want to touch on is pin cushion versus barrel distortion. And this is kind of like a shout out to uh, all the budget manufacturers out there. The issue with pin cushion distortion on anamorphics is it makes the image look flat. So you kind of lose that whole anamorphic 3D look where the subject pops off that waterfall bokeh. Anyways, I hope this video kind of helped educate some people. I know it's kind of ranty, but I have some upcoming budget anamorphic reviews. So stay tuned for that. Some stuff coming out soon that you guys want to see that will work right in the 4D as well. I just hope some of you guys now kind of have a better understanding of what the purpose of anamorphic is. Again, it's all about dirtying up these super clean, sterile sensors. It's all about giving character. You don't want character if you want sterile, go look at other lenses, not anamorphic, go look at spherical.